Hey folks, um, I wanted to take you through a few tips and tricks that I've learned about uh, how to uh, manage uh, various assessment resources uh, in included with uh, uh, BFW um, and in our case in particular the book uh, Statistics and Probability with Applications 4th Edition. Anyways, uh, the first thing I want to talk about is uh, the exam view database and the software. Um, one thing that's a little concerning about the exam view software is that uh, exam view is no longer going to continue to support. There is no exam view company. The company that now manages it is no longer going to support. Uh, and uh, let's see here. The version that we got was a version 11 something. I'm using a slightly older version than the one that you're going to get that you install. Um, but version 11, it's pretty good. I, I like it. If you've ever used exam view before, it has all the features you've used before. And I don't know that it has much extra except for this one really interesting thing. Um, let me go ahead and pull up one of the tests that I've created or a quiz that I created. Let's see here. Uh, I might have to do a little bit of searching for this guy. Uh, let's see here. Let's go quiz, quiz. Maybe it's this one. There we go. So anyways, um, if I have a test loaded in exam view, something that's new is now I can export supposedly directly to Canvas. And it mostly works. Um, but I am going to show you a couple of neat tricks that we can do uh, as long as exam view continues to work for us. And right now it's working for me. Um, I got uh, my site tech to install exam view on my teacher computer, my desk computer at school. And I myself installed the exam view software uh, with the database on my home computer. Or I'm kind of fibbing because I didn't install I guess I didn't install the software I guess I just installed the database I'm not even sure how I did that um, nevertheless I kind of have the same setup at home as I do at school all right um, let me show you what can be done with this um, first of all I'm just gonna focus on chapter one since it'd be too much for me to go chapter by chapter and you'll get the basics this way so uh, let's go through let me go ahead and close this test and let me go and show you what resources are included here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and say new test. And for now, we'll just name it blah, 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 blah. And uh, I'm going to show you how I can select some questions. Uh, so uh, I can, the, first of all, I love these options randomly from a list while viewing. They're all cool options. Um, but I do have a recommendation. I think the best way to go, and I'm just going to take you through Michael Weingarten's best practice for exam view with BFW Achieve, okay? Um, we're going to take a look at, I think it's by standard that is most interesting to me. And so I'm going to go ahead and select the, uh, the folder that has the uh, banks in it, and I'll open that. And then I'll select the full the next folder down open that and then I'm gonna go into chapter one again you can see this is for SPA 4 statistics and probability with applications version 4 and I'm gonna go into there and now you can see that I've got some stuff I've got something called an extra prepared test and uh, and two quizzes and by the way those materials they are also available for you in PDF form. The, th the three that I just mentioned are available in PDF form in BFW Achieve. If you go into the resources, you can find those quizzes, and they're just in PDF form. The nice thing about having them here is that we can modify them, and we can, or we can use the material that's in them, and we can expand on them. Uh, for now, I'm just going to go and grab the Chapter 1 Test Bank. I'm going to select. And then down here, I'm going to select again, and then I'm going to say next. And by the way, before I go on, you can see that there's one bank and there's 156 questions. I'm going to go next. Now, the thing I like about going into the uh, viewing by standard mode is that uh, the folks at BFW uh, did uh, label every problem in the database with a learning objective that we can use to help us to choose questions that we might want to use on a quiz or a test. Uh, and you can see uh, for chapter one in the uh, SPA4 book, um, it goes all the way up to uh, there's uh, 
section 1.8. I'm not into, uh, for some reason they list 1.9, uh, uh, 1 and 1.93. I'm not even sure what those are. I'm not too worried about it, but they do have questions that are associated. Oh, sorry. Uh, let's see. Oh, here we go. They do have questions that are associated with every section 1.1, 1 1.2, 1 1.3, 1 etc. And the thing that I like, oh, oh by the way, uh, let's see here. Maybe there's a little mistake that I'm making. Oh, good, good. Okay. So I love the fact that I can filter either by multiple choice or essay. If you want to create printed tests, then maybe you might want to include a few essay questions. But if you want to use Canvas to, uh, to give the exam view quiz, and you can, and I'm going to show you how, um, then I recommend just choose multiple choice because those questions will automatically come into Canvas and they'll be ready to go and the answer will already be identified and it'll be ready for you to give the 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 quiz to students and it'll and it'll auto grade and the grade will automatically be entered in the canvas gradebook so anyways that's my that's a big trick right there is choose select questions by standard make sure you select just multiple choice over here in this box of question type and then what I like to do is go through each of these sections and make sure that I've got a few questions from each of those sections. You can see uh, for like section one, there's like eight plus six plus eight plus three. Um, so about 20. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, for section one, there's eight plus six. There's 14 questions for section one. For section 1.2. There is 8 plus 3 plus 4, so about 20 questions. So I can just go through and just say, hey, I'd like uh, maybe one question from 1.1, 1 .1, uh, one qu another one from 1.1, 1 .1 point two, whatever that means. Uh, and then uh, I'm just going to go through and say I'd like a question from each one of these sections. Now I'm not going to do it for all of these guys because I'd like to save a little bit of time, but just to give you the idea. Uh, maybe I'll do a few more at the end so that you can see the breadth of interesting types of questions that we have. Near the end, there's more stuff with uh, graphics, so we'll try a few of these. There we go. Makes it pretty easy to select the next question. Okay, then after I've selected all the types of questions that I'd like, uh, I'll go ahead and say select and then close and then I can actually look at all the different questions and you can see there's questions that include tables there's questions that include graphs um, and uh, all the different types of questions that we saw in chapter one now I recommend before you uh, export these questions and then import them into canvas I recommend that you go through and you make sure that you like the questions and the answers that you feel that they're fair um, if you run across questions where you you getting the correct answer would be debatable I'd say we should either not put that question in a quiz or a test or you should go in and modify the text of the question or the answer or the graphic uh, in order order to make it so that uh, you think it's reasonable for students and uh, I will say this um, uh, hold on I had a thought hold on one sec ah I remembered um, my thought is is that I think you should make the corrections here in exam view before you transfer to canvas don't get me wrong it's totally possible that you could transfer the questions to canvas and then modify them there it actually works pretty cool and I'll show you I'll show you that in a second um, so anyways uh, but if you make the modification here and you ever decide you want to reuse these questions um, you, you, you'll have all of your modifications here uh, in, instead like I've done it already I've gone through and made some retake uh, problems and instead of modifying them in canvas I modify them here and then I export to canvas anyways it's a suggestion um, you, you can figure it out your own way okay so let's go ahead and export so I'm gonna go file and I'm going to go export and I'm going to choose to canvas now if for some reason you're using an older version of exam view um, I believe either one of these blackboard exports will work and in a minute you'll see why when I go to the canvas import but for now I'm going to choose export to canvas 
And when I do, I'm going to go ahead and give the quiz a meaningful name. Uh, in this case, I'm going to call it Chapter 2, Quiz 1. And it's not really about Chapter 2, but I already have Chapter 1. I'm going to overwrite this a little bit later, but I, I like giving it kind of a unique name. And then I'll go ahead and hit save. And when I do, it's going to create a zip file with all the questions and all of the graphics related to all the questions. So I need the entire zip file. And that whole zip file is what's going to be imported into Canvas in just a second. So I'm going to go ahead and hit save. And by the way, I made, I, I'm saving in a directory that is somewhere where I can find it. It's in my, uh, my school OneDrive uh, NPHS 2024 MW tests folder. Okay. And that's where I'm going to save all of my uh, uh, exam view canvas exports. And uh, and then when I go into Canvas, I'll know where to look for the thing to import it. So I'm going to go ahead and hit save. Oh, this is important. Um, here I'm going to give the, the test a name, and I'll give it the same name that I gave it just a minute ago when I named the file, Chapter 2, Quiz 1. And this is kind of important. Um, you have to give it an, a name for the image directory. And... Uh, just to be careful, I like the idea of a unique name. Don't give multiple files the same directory name, and certainly do provide a directory name. In this case, I'm going to just write it out. Chapter 2, Quiz 1. And I put it all together. I'm an old DOS guy where uh, DOS didn't used to like to have spaces in names. So just to be safe, this is how I play it. Okay, then I go ahead and say OK. So now it's creating the zip file with the folder that I just named for the for the image files. Okay, so now that we've done all that, we're going to go to Canvas and we're going to try to import this and make it into a quiz. So in Canvas, I'm at my home page for my statistics course. And I'm going to go down to Settings. And I'm going to go to Import Course Content. And then I'm going to go and choose uh, Import from Blackboard 6, 7, 8, and 9. Uh, and by the way, I did not find this out through trial and error. Uh, there actually, I think there was either a Canvas page that, I think I found a Canvas page that explained to do this. Uh, I don't think it was uh, BFW that explained how to do it. Um, so here we go. Then I choose the file. In this case, it'll be the Chapter 2 Quiz 1 zip that I just created. Let me get myself out of my own way here. And then, uh, I don't know whether this is absolutely necessary, but I've been saying create new question bank. I strongly recommend that you do that because I did already find that when I tried to import two quizzes and I and I tried to use like the same name of the question bank, I did get a quiz that looked like a hybrid between two separate quizzes. So I'm just going to make it brand new, new question bank, and I'm just going to give it the same unique name that I gave that image directory. Chapter 2, Quiz 1, something that's unique for this particular quiz. And then I'm going to say import all content, and I'm not going to mess with either of these. Uh, I've read about this overwrite assessment content with matching IDs, and to me it sounds like we should not be checking that box. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and say import. And it takes a moment or so to import, but if you leave it on the screen, you'll get a status. And eventually it'll go from queued to complete. And uh, 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 there we go. At least now we can see that it's running. Uh, I decided to just leave my video recorder running so you could see the whole process. It's You can see it's not that bad. And it's done. So now I can go to quizzes. And when I do, what happens is, is when you import the exam view quiz, it automatically comes in as what's known as a, as a, a, a Canvas classic quiz. Um, for whatever now now canvas is going to give up support for those classic quizzes i think like in a year or so maybe two um and so for for that reason i'm just migrating these into uh what's called the canvas new quiz and the way that i do that is i come over here to the three dots on the thing i just imported and i say migrate and it takes a moment or two to migrate and 
I don't know if I have great reasons for doing that. Uh, I do know that the uh, Canvas quizzes have some extra functionality that the old classic quizzes did not. And uh, so I guess I'm thinking to myself, hey, if I want to add a couple extra questions, uh, maybe I'll take advantage of the fancy new Canvas quiz question types. Anyways, you can see now that I have two Canvas Chapter 2 Quiz 1s. One of them has a filled-in rocket ship, and one of them has a non-filled-in rocket ship. The non-filled-in one is the classic quiz, and the filled-in one is the new migrated uh, Canvas new quiz. Uh, they really got to come up with a better name for it. Now that we made the quiz in exam view and we exported it and we imported it into Canvas, we're mostly done. I mean, at this point, you're pretty much ready to give this quiz to students. Again, as long as you first double check that you, that you think that the questions and answers are uh, not open for debate. Um, and I'll remind you that all the questions are multiple choice, um, but there are a couple other tips and tricks that I would like to share with you uh, if you feel like proceeding. Um, I'm going to go ahead and click on this Chapter 2 quiz that is a Canvas new quiz. And we're going to take a quick look. Um, first of all, there's some stuff that we can set here. For me, I'll set my uh, assignment group, uh, you know, what, whatever. Uh, I, if you use grading groups, if you use uh, assignment groups in Canvas, and if you don't, maybe you should. Um, let's see here. What else? Uh, anything else? Who I want to assign it to? Whether I want it to sync with Q? I probably do want to sync it with Q. Um, I'd like to say how many points. Um, I, and I, I've been limiting the, my points on these quizzes and tests to four, um, but you can use whatever number of points you're happy with. I'm trying to go by some of these new uh, philosophies on grading for grading with equity. Anyways, uh, so I like the idea of the uh, the four point grading scale. What else? Uh, okay, now here's what, where it gets. Well, let me go ahead and hit save so I can save those parameters real quick. And oh, they don't. They want me to have a due date, so I'll put one in there really quickly, and then I'll save. Now here's where things get really interesting. I well, first of all, I don't know why it booted me out, but I'll, I'll go back in. I guess when you save, it just boots you right out. Uh, anyways, I'm going to go down here to build. And there's a few things that I'd like to recommend that you consider that you set for your quiz. First of all, you'll probably want to add some instructions here. Let the kids know what are the rules of the testing, especially if you're going to give an online quiz, right? And by the way, if you are going to give an online quiz, I strongly recommend that you use the new uh, light speed uh, uh, classroom monitoring software that the district offers. Um, uh, they, if you don't know about that, send me a question. Um, but uh, with it, you can monitor the activity of all Chromebooks in your classroom that are district issued. And what I do is before the quiz or the test, I make kids grab Chromebooks from my cart if they don't already have a district issued Chromebook. Then as they're going through the quiz or the test, I can monitor all the screens at once. Anyways, um, so here are some instructions you might want to give to kids taking the quiz if it's online, right? And then uh, what else? Um, here's the questions. And right now, you uh, oh, you can see. So what happened was not only did the questions get imported with the graphics and the tables, but you can even see that the, an the, sh the, the correct answers are shown as being selected, okay? So, uh, so it's kind of neat. I mean, it really does everything. It, it, uh, Canvas pulls in the question, pulls in the answers, marks which questions, which answers are correct. Uh, I think it's pretty cool. Uh, and again, as I said before, you can add your own custom questions if you'd like. Oh, but here's the tips and tricks I wanted to share. Is you might want to check on settings. In fact, I think you should. Uh, what I'm doing right now is shuffling questions and answers. Because it's an online quiz, I'd like to reduce the, um, the uh, desire for students to communicate with each other. And doing this is a one way to do that. Um, what else? Um, I could, you could do a time limit. I am definitely allowing a calculator, and I'll make it scientific. 
and uh, you could allow multiple attempts. I am going to allow kids to do retakes, but I'm not going to allow them to do multiple attempts on the same quiz or test. Uh, oh, and I am going to let them see what score they got after they're done, but I'm, I'm going to turn off these things down here that tell them which answers uh, I don't want them to know which were the uh, which were the correct answers for sure okay so I'm gonna uncheck those boxes okay something else I wanted to show you with regard to shuffling of the questions and the answers if we go oh uh, if we go back to the build screen what you'll see is is that the multiple choice answers are not a B C and D that means it's going to be a lot harder for a kid to cheat by sharing their answers with another student. So not only uh, are the kids going to get it where the multiple choice answers are not A, B, and C, uh, uh, but if we choose this setting where we shuffle the questions, then it's going to be very difficult for students to communicate with one another and share answers. Okay, um, people, believe it or not, that's it. Uh, I, I apologize for taking 20 minutes out of your life, but I did limit it to 20 minutes and I'm hopeful that I got, I'm hopeful that this was an investment that you will find to be worthwhile. I am hopeful that this investment in time makes it so that you can make up lots of, lots of quizzes and tests that your students will have to uh, struggle to, uh, to, so, so that, but to, uh, to study for these quizzes and tests so that they really learn the material um, so that uh, so that you can feel like hey this this will make me feel like they really get it uh, and uh, you won't have to do too much work in the process of making or grading these tests that's what my hope is make the kids work hard so that they understand but you don't work too hard Make your life easier. Work smarter, not harder. Okay, that's all I got for now. Let me know if you have questions.